Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to put together everything we've learned so far to solve a real world problem. Before we do that, I want to emphasize a little bit about what constitutes good styling of code. This is a topic that is at the end of the user input notes, but I didn't quite have time to get to it in the last set of notes for the video because the video is getting somewhat long. So I'm going to cover it here in this video, and then we can see examples of good C++ style as we solve a real-world problem. So first off, why do you want to write C++ code that looks good? Okay, several reasons. First off, it's more readable. That doesn't just mean for you, but almost more importantly for others who contribute to your code. Likely you'll be working on a software engineering team with several other people and you'll all be working on each other's code. So you want to write code that's readable to help them out. Typically you'll have something called a style guide for your team, your organization, or your company, or in our case for our class that will denote what constitutes good style. That way all of the code is written consistently. We have our own style guide which I've included a link here. It's also in the top level Google Drive directory for the class. You'll want to read through it before you turn in each of your programming assignments. There are some pieces of information in that style guide that may be unfamiliar to you because we haven't covered those topics yet, so just ignore those. But you will definitely want to take a look at like good naming conventions for variables, uh, etc because that will be important for your programming assignments that you turn in for grading in this class. So kind of the cliff notes of what's in that C++ style guide. Mostly we want to name our variables such that the names are informative and consistent, whether it's consistent camel case or consistent Pascal case, that's up to you. We want to make sure that we use white space in our program consistently, so this would be like indenting all of the executable lines of code in main at the same indentation level. So that looks good. You can see this code belongs to main. Uh, using spaces consistently, for example, this would be an inconsistent use of spaces around our operator, specifically the stream insertion operator. You'll also want to declare your variables at the top of a function before any executable statements like assignment or arithmetic or using another function, for example. This isn't required by the compiler, but it does make it easy to see where a pro uh, variable is declared so you can find out what it's initialized to and what the data type is really quickly. If these were dispersed throughout, this main function, it would be hard to find exactly where the declaration is, whereas here it's consistently at the top for every variable. Uh, with regards to commenting, every program that you turn in for grading, like programming assignments, should have a comment block at the top that indicates at least this information at a minimum, like the name, the class, the assignment number, the last modified date, description. Um, some other things to include depending on the program would be uh, any known bugs or any links to external sources that you use to solve the problem. Any more details about what constitutes good C++ style? I highly recommend taking a look at the notes to get more information about it. So now let's take all of this style information and all of the basics of C++ we have learned so far to solve an example problem. So the example problem that I want to solve is computing the volume of a cone. And while this may seem like a simple task, uh, this is actually an important task. In fact, if you go to Google and you search for volume of a cone, Google has an applet, a little program, embedded right in the search results where you can enter in values for the radius and the height and it will enter those values in this formula and tell you the volume of a right circular cone with that volume and that height. So let's try it. Maybe I'll do 5.0 for the radius and 10.0 for the height. And that tells me the volume is 
0.8 cubic units. So there is a team or maybe an individual at Google or somewhere that as part of a software engineering task was tasked with solving this problem. So it is important and we already know everything we need to know to solve the logic behind this problem. So let's take a look. Our one more task is going to have us start uh, just coding up the main function. So go ahead and open up cone volume fund.cpp and gedit and code up an empty main function. And while you're at it, you can actually take it a little bit further and go ahead and declare variables for the radius and the height and then prompt the user for those values and store them. A good practice is always to echo out the value you get from a user input just to make sure that it was saved correctly. So take a moment and think about what would be the appropriate data type to use for the volumes radius and the volumes height. Google allowed us to enter in numbers that had fractional components. So I think that double will be good for us to use. So we always want to save, compile, and test after we write a little bit of code. So I'm going to go ahead and just run it at this point and make sure that we can see those prompts. That looks good. Now we can go ahead and use CN and the stream extraction operator in order to read in the radius and the height. And just have little echo CIOT statements to see that those were stored correctly. So that looks good. Now we're ready to code up the part that relates the radius and the height using the volume of a cone formula. So here's our formula. Volume equals pi times radius squared times height all divided by 3. So even though there's no multiplication operator explicitly printed in the formula here, we know it exists by our background of algebra. So we'll have to code up at least a couple of these multiplication operators and one division operator. So even though we haven't necessarily seen these operators in action, they'll work quite similarly to how we'd expect them to, uh, except for our division, but we'll set that up so that it performs floating point division instead of integer division. And then in a near future video, we'll talk more about arithmetic and integer versus floating point division. So we're going to need a variable to store the result. A variable called volume is pretty informative. A variable that was just called result would not be so informative. So practicing good styling here, naming our variables such that they self-document. And then a good comment to put would be the formula for volume of a cone that we're going to use so that there's some context for the arithmetic that we're about to code up. All 
All right, so we've got volume is assigned 1 third pi r squared h. So I'm going to explicitly have 1.0 divided by 3.0 for 1 third instead of integer 1 divided by integer 3 because of this integer versus floating point division problem that I've been alluding to. We'll talk more about it soon. And then times. Now we could just hard code 3.14 here for pi, but I think it would be more useful if we declared a variable to store pi. So let's have double pi is 3.14. But before we move on, I want to change two things related to this variable. First, convention dictates that whenever we're going to use a variable that doesn't change, we should name that variable in all caps so that it makes it really easy for us to see in the code when a constant variable value is being used. So capital P, capital I will help make this code more readable. And we can actually enforce that this variable's value never changes, meaning it's never reassigned by adding the reserved word const in front of it. So I'll make a note here. Const is short for constant. And the compiler ensures that const variables are never reassigned. You'll actually get a compiler error if you try. And then a little comment about why we're naming it in all caps, because by convention, const variables should be named in all caps. Awesome. So let's come back over here. We've got one third times pi times radius squared. We haven't talked about how to square a number yet, and we're not going to quite yet. So let's just do radius times radius, which is the same as radius squared. And we can give a really informative result see out statement here. We could say something like the volume of a cone with radius, and then we'll specify the radius and do the same thing for height. All right, write a little bit of code, save, compile, and test. I'm going to use the same numbers that I used when I tested it out online so I can compare. And this one says 261.667 is the volume, whereas when we did this online, it said 261.8. Take a moment and think about why ours might be off from Google's in just a little bit. So this is likely due to the fact that Google is using a more precise version of pi, likely with a few more digits than two. So I'm gonna add a few more digits to mine and then run it again. and see if we can get it to be a little bit closer. And there we do. So 261.799 rounded is 261.8, which does in fact match. Awesome. So one thing I will point out what I just did here, if you ever run your program, uh, but you just wanna kill it, you don't want to continue it executing until the end, or maybe you've got a bug where you can't get to the end of your program, a uh, little shortcut is control C and that will kill your program. So that carrot C you're seeing there that I did up here, uh, that will kill your program, control C. So in summary, for our example, we've pulled together everything we've learned so far related to the general form of a C++ program, data types, declaring variables of certain data types, getting user input, displaying results to user output, and now even a little bit more related to arithmetic. We've got some division and some multiplication in here. And we learned about constant variable values. 
Let's say I try down here to assign 0 to pi. I will just show you here that compiler error you get. It says on line 25, line 25, error, assignment of read-only variable pi. So it's pretty much saying you cannot assign this variable. It is constant. It is read-only. So I'll just leave that there and say causes compiler error. From here, I would recommend opening up a new C++ file, perhaps called area circle fun or circle area fun, and try to do the exact same thing we did here from memory, but for solving the area of a circle, which is area equals pi r squared, or the circumference of a circle, area equals two pi r, and see if you can recreate this for a slightly different problem definitely worth practicing. I'll go ahead and type that up here as a task and then you can start working on it.